Hello and welcome to another chapter of mathematics based on vectors. Today we shall be discussing about the basic definition of vectors and scalars. Later we are going to discuss the types of vectors. After that we are going to perform the addition of two given vectors. And finally we shall conclude this lecture based on vectors by discussing a numerical problem that would be based on the concepts that we are going to discuss in the coming segment of this lecture. So starting with the basic definition of a scalar and a vector, we have a scalar as a quantity which has only magnitude and no direction. Examples of scalars are length, distance, volume, density etc. And in order to specify a scalar quantity we need two things. First one is a unit in terms of which it is measured and second one is a real number which can be positive, negative or zero. Next we are going to discuss factors which are the quantities that have magnitude as well as direction. Example of factors are force, weight, velocity etc. And in order to specify a vector three things are needed which are a unit in terms of which it is measured a real number and a particular direction. Next we are going to find out how we can represent a given vector. Now we know that a vector has magnitude as well as direction. So it can be represented geometrically by a directed line segment AB as shown in this figure. Thus a vector is determined by two points A and B such that the magnitude of this vector is equal to the length of the segment A, B and its direction is from A to B and the vector is represented as AB with an arrow above AB where point A is known as the origin or the initial point and B is known as the terminal or end point. Next we are going to discuss the types of vectors. So starting with the zero vector, a vector whose magnitude is zero is known as the zero or null vector and is denoted by the symbol as shown where we have put an arrow above zero. Another type of vector is an unit vector. A vector whose magnitude is unity is known as the unit vector. Now let us suppose vector A be a vector whose magnitude or modulus is A. Then the corresponding unique vector is in the direction of vector A and is denoted by this symbol and is read as A cap. Next we are going to discuss equal vectors. Now we suppose two vectors vector A and vector B. Then they are said to be equal if and only if they satisfy three conditions which are they have equal magnitudes, they have same or parallel supports and they have same direction. Next we have collinear vectors. Two or more vectors are said to be collinear if their directions are either parallel or collinear irrespective of their magnitudes. Next we are going to discuss coplanar vectors. Three or more vectors which lie in the same plane or are parallel to the same plane are known as the coplanar vectors. Next we are going to discuss the negative of a vector. A vector having the same magnitude as that of the given vector but directed in the opposite direction is known as the negative of a vector. And the negative of a vector let's say A is represented as minus of vector A. Next we are going to discuss the vector algebra. So starting with addition of vectors, we suppose we have three points, let's say point O, A and B. So that vector OA represent vector A and vector AB represent vector B. Then OB that is vector OB is defined as the resultant of vector A and vector B. Thus the vector C which is equal to vector OB is equal to the sum of vector A and vector B. 
This is known as the triangle law of addition of vectors. Thus, we can say that if three points OAB are so chosen that vector OA and vector AB respectively represent vector A and B, then the resultant vector, which is vector OB, is defined as the sum of vector A and B and is written as vector C equal to vector A plus vector B. And this is known as the triangle law of addition of vectors. Next, we are going to discuss the parallelogram law of vectors addition. For this, we are going to consider this parallelogram. Now here, vector OB is equal to vector AC which is equal to vector B. And similarly, vector OA is equal to vector A which is equal to vector BC. So that vector A plus vector B is equal to vector C. Then, vector OA plus vector OB is equal to vector A plus vector B which is equal to vector C which is vector OC. This is the parallelogram law of addition of vectors. Thus, if we have two vectors A and B represented by two adjacent sides of a parallelogram as shown in this figure, then their sum C is represented as the diagonal of the parallelogram which is co-initial with the given vectors. Next we are going to discuss the properties of vector addition. The first property is that vector addition is commutative that is vector A plus vector B is equal to vector B plus vector A. Next property gives us that vector addition is associative that is the sum of vector B and C added to vector A is equal to the summation of vector A and B with C. Next we are going to discuss the existence of additive identity. The zero vector acts as additive identity that is the addition of vector A and vector 0 is equal to addition of vector 0 and vector A which is equal to vector A. Next we have existence of additive inverse. The negative of vector A that is minus A vector acts as the additive inverse. That is the addition of vector A and the negative of vector A that is minus A is equal to null vector which can be further rewritten as the addition of negative of vector A that is minus A vector and A vector. Finally, we are going to discuss the numerical problem that would be based on the vector algebra that we have discussed in this lecture. The problem says that if the vectors vector A, vector B, vector C can be represented by three sides of a triangle taken in order then prove that addition of vector A, B and C is equal to null vector which is vector 0. For this let ABC be the corresponding triangle where vector AB is equal to vector A and vector BC is equal to vector B and vector AC is equal to vector C. Now we have vector A plus vector B plus vector C equal to vector AB plus vector BC plus vector CA which can be rewritten as the addition of vector AB and vector BC with vector CA which can be rewritten by the use of triangle law as summation of vector AC and vector C a which is equal to null vector since vector AC is equal to minus of vector C a. It follows that the resultant of the vectors represented by the three sides of the triangle that we have drawn earlier taken in order is 0 that is in a triangle ABC we have the addition of three vectors that is vector AB, vector BC and vector CA 
equal to vector 0. Hence, we have proved that addition of vectors a, b and c is equal to null vector. With this, we conclude the first lecture based on vectors in which we have discussed about vectors and their types and the addition of two or more given vectors.